Sit pretty. Come here. Come here. Get in here. Gotta be on TVs. It's the Northwoods Cooking Show. Hurry up. It's time for... The Northwoods Cooking Show. Starring Uncle Roy and Miss Callie, the troublemaking dog. Hi, and welcome to the Northwoods Cooking Show. I'm your host, Uncle Roy, and my lovely assistant, Miss Callie. Look, she got pretty ribbons in her hair. She was at the beauty shop today. Yeah, she always gets pretty ribbons when she goes to the beauty shop. Come here, Callie. So pretty. Here we go. <laughs> Long way around to get a tweet. Well, it's still the holiday season here at the Northwoods Cooking Show, and we're going to continue on with some more lovely treats today. We're going to start off with making a traditional gingerbread bun cake. Now, uh, this is so simple to make. It's a lot of ingredients, but it's still easy to make. And we're going to put it in the bun pan, and you can serve it with a dollop of uh, whipping cream on there. It's just oh, it's so heavenly and light. So first of all, we're going to mix in our dry ingredients. And for this, we're going to put them in a separate bowl. And we need two and a quarter cup, or two and a half cups of flour. And again, always make sure now when you're measuring out your flour that you take and level it off. Because even an extra teaspoon or tablespoon that's heaping over the cup is going to make your product really dry. Whether it be your cookies or your cakes or your quick breads, anything really. So you just want to make sure you level that off evenly. So you get the just exact amount according to your recipe that you follow. And that's two and one half cups. Next we're going to be putting in just one cup of sugar. And that's just regular white sugar. And that goes right into the bowl too. For Christmas. And to this, we're going to be adding a quarter cup of unsweetened cocoa. Now, don't use Nestle's Quick because that's not cocoa, that's a chocolate milk drink. You want the unsweetened baking cocoa. And we just need one quarter cup of this. Now, I'm going to level that off too. I don't want to have too much of that. Any powder, especially, you want to level off. There we go. And to that we're going to be needing two teaspoons of ground ginger. Of course, that's what gives it the gingerbread flavor, which is ground ginger. That's one. And two, and I just tap it on the inside of the container and that levels it off for me. And one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. There's a lot of these dry ingredients here, so you want to make sure that these all get mixed in very well. That's one and a half of baking powder and three quarter teaspoon of baking soda, which is a half plus a quarter. And there again, you just level off on the inside of your box. And then we need a half teaspoon of salt. Kosher salt. <laughs> Use that all my baking products. And it does. It's a true thing that it's less sodium than regular iodized salt. And it does make your baking products much lighter and fluffier. So I always use kosher salt in baking. And then we need a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. top of that we need a half teaspoon of nutmeg. Oh there's a lot of ingredients in this gingerbread. Whoops. Oh, oh that. Gingerbread has a lot of spices in. And a half teaspoon of ground cloves. Mm -hmm. 
and these we take and mix together thoroughly. Put those in the sink. Now the best thing for mixing up your dry ingredients is a wire whisk. Just take and mix these up all together. You want to incorporate all these spices and um, activators, your cocoa, all of this. You want to make sure they're thoroughly blended. If you put these in separately into the bowl, they're not going to get thoroughly blended and you might end up with uh, flat cake. You might end up with unflavored cake. It will have a tendency to cling to the sides of the bowl, all over the place. By blending your dry ingredients thoroughly, you get an even mixture into your batter. These are going to get mixed up thoroughly into the batter anyway. But this just aids it and helps it to make it much nicer. Helps it to bake and taste better. Cook better, bake better, fluff up better, rise better. Okay, so now into our mixing bowl, we're going to be needing two eggs. Remember to take and crack your egg on the countertop. Cracking it on the side of your bowl, the sharpness is going to give you eggshells into your product. And we don't want to have eggshells at Christmas time, or any time really, but especially at Christmas time, because everything has to be perfect. You know how that is when you go to serve your guests. And we're going to uh, beat these up first slightly. And to this we're going to be adding uh, one cup of molasses. And of course just the old, the old trick. Just spray your measuring cup with a little spray. That way when you go to pour anything heavy like molasses, carol syrups for candy making and stuff like that, you don't end up with it sticking to the sides of the container. Because then you lose a lot of your product. You want a cup in there, you don't want three-fourths. <laughs> Allie, this is a nice little tweet. Mmm. Mmm. Oh. Sneaking around the corner. So I just pour this right into the bowl. And you can see how it's just coming right off of the cup sliding right off, which is really nice. And then we need a third cup vegetable oil. And to this we need one cup of water. That's all blended together. And then we're going to stir in our dry ingredients. Now remember, we don't want to put this on the mixer and we don't want to turn the mixer on low. A lot of people think that's a good way of stirring in because they don't want to do it by hand. Sorry, do it by hand. Got to get a wooden spoon for that. And the reason being, and of course, I've said this before, is we don't want to activate the gluten. And that is what the mixer is going to do. It's going to make your cake tough and not rise as light and fluffy. And we're going to pour this now into our bun pan. And then I get to spray flour so you can grease and flour your bun pan or I just get the spray which has flour in it already. This is that baker's joy. Great stuff. Oops. Dog hair. I wonder where that came from. Miss Kelly Alley, are you helping out too much? You're getting your fur in the in the containers. Yeah. 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 We don't want dog hair enough. Now, Christmas these works. No, we don't. So just spray it generously. Make sure to remember now to get the center. That's always important too. Because a lot of people will forget to get that little tube on the inside. And get that all around. And, and we just take and pour this right into our pan. Mmm. Callie Alley. Ooh, look at her. Ooh. 
Mm. She wants to lick the spoon. Don't you? This will make your house smell like Christmas. Ah, this and that. My cranberry orange ginger relish when I made that one. The fumes, the smells, oh. God, it's like patent that smell. It is so wonderful. But this here, when this starts baking in the oven, gingerbread in the house, it's such a wonderful Christmas smell. Ain't that white cow? Yeah, I didn't even drool and you're like, oh, I want some, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we put this in our bun pan now and we just tap it around, down. This is gonna get rid of your air bubbles and then it also helps to spread the batter out so your cake uh, rises evenly. And our oven is preheated right now at 350 degrees. Oh, Callie, look at We got little snowman towels, yeah! Little snowmans on the towels, they're that cute, yeah! Look at the match your bows, look at that wed. Match your bows, yeah, yeah, match your ribbons. Pretty ribbons. Oh, oh, that in the oven. Now that gets time for 45 to 60 minutes. Hello, that's a 15 minute degree difference, or 15 minute difference, isn't it? <laughs> well, that's what the recipe calls for. Now from experience, what I know is you test it at your, at your soonest time, and then you can go by intervals of five minutes to keep testing to see if it's done. Uh, check it again at 45 minutes, and then every five minutes, we just keep checking my toothpicks until it's done. Oh, there go the birdies. Birdies. Six o'clock. Yeah. So now we'll go on to our next recipe after we clean up. And we just pulled it out of the oven. The toothpick came out clean. But we want to let it sit in the container on the cupboard to cool for at least 10 minutes before inverting onto a serving dish. If you invert it, invert it right away, your cake is going to break apart. So you want it to sit and set for at least 10 minutes before turning it over. And here's our gingerbread, uh, gingerbread bun cake. Mm, that looks good, don't it, Kelly? But we gotta have a little whipped cream on there. Yeah, mmm, that makes it even better. We hope you enjoy this, because I know Kelly and I are going to, mmm.